right now. Greg Sheridan, foreign editor at The Australian, joins me from Melbourne. Greg, welcome. I have to start. You're a Victorian. I back Operation Day Entry, the bombshell report out today. I said a little bit of this at the editorial. At what point are Victorians going to say enough is enough? At what point does someone even inside the Labor Party say, you know, good, decent Labor people say, this emperor's got no clothes? Well, uh, Peter, I must say I tended to agree with James Morrow. Nothing makes the case for ICAC in New South Wales more than uh, the constraints on IBAC in Victoria. Uh, I don't think Andrews is under any significant pressure um, at all. I think your, your program puts him under more pressure than anything else. Uh, I do think there's a crisis of democracy in state politics in Australia. Uh, the voters just don't follow state politics. Uh, the traditional media doesn't impinge on their consciousness much. Uh, the ABC, I think, is completely derelict in abolishing its state-based 730 reports. Um, and I don't think we really have functioning democracy in states. Certainly we don't really in Victoria because um, there is no effective scrutiny and there is no consequence. Uh, you know, Andrews is a shockingly mm. bad Premier. We have terrible debt in Victoria. Look at our legal system, the travesty that produced the George Pell um, conviction, unanimously overthrown in a minute by the High Court as soon as um, the High Court judges got... Uh, you know, this whole Victorian travesty before them. and um, But he suffers no consequences. Look how well he won the last uh, state election. So I think, oddly enough, it makes a case for ICAC. It makes a case for voluntary voting because so many people now vote in state elections who, who just don't know anything about it at all. And uh, so my sad report would be, I don't think Andrews is under the slightest bit of political pressure out of all this. And it's uh, very, very bad for Victoria and for Australia. And it also makes a case for significant reform of the Victorian Liberal Party division, but uh, that, uh, we could spend a whole hour on that one. Let's stay with Premiers, though. Sure. We'll go to West Australia. Mark McGowan, of course, in China, following in the footsteps of Daniel Andrews. We know Anastasia Palaszczuk will be there later on in the year. But he's been caught on camera during a lunch. This is in Beijing. Take a real whack at uh, Shadow Minister for Defence, Andrew Hastie. Have a look. <laughs> Now, Andrew Hastie returned to serve this afternoon. Let's have a listen. I was actually flattered that I was living rent-free inside Premier Mark McGowan's head. Um, you keep those sorts of comments to yourself and you back in your colleagues across the parliaments, regardless of what party they're in. Uh, so I think, it's, I think it's pretty damaging. And um, frankly, it shows that he's out of his intellectual depth. Greg, what's uh, your take on all this? Well, I think it's a very poor show from McGowan. Um, the marginal defence I'd make of him is that these seem to have been private comments made to an Australian, not, uh, not to a Chinese. So it's a bit different from if he'd said it at a press conference. Um, you know, a ridiculous attack on Andrew Hastie. Of course, Andrew Hastie, a fine person, very fine politician. But my concern, really, it just shows how tremendously unsophisticated Mark McGowan is, you know, that he still thinks this is the story after everything that's happened with Beijing's behaviour. He still won't raise uh, fellow Australian citizens uh, locked up on trumped-up charges in China. He still won't hear a word against China. Uh, Michaelia Cash had a very powerful point earlier in the day when she said, how do you square Mark McGowan's remarks with Penny Wong's speech at the National Press Club the other day. All right, he doesn't like Andrew Hastie because they're from different political parties, but McGowan is actually rejecting the core analysis of all Australian national security agencies and of his own federal government. And, you know, he's a money-grubbing Premier trying to make a buck for West Australia. Uh, as Tony Abbott once said, two emotions drive Australia's re reaction to China, fear and greed. But why doesn't he just keep his, his mouth out of strategic issues about which he's so spectacularly ignorant and speaks so foolishly? Yeah, of course, he knows in China everything gets retailed back, everything. I mean, you're in a, a surveillance state. Anything could be recorded, let alone the hot mic. I, I just think he, he exposed himself as a clown and uh, he's not the only Premier in that, that space. Um, 
the death announced today, Catholic priest, media personality, Bob McGuire, Father Bob, people will know him of, a maverick, absolutely big personality across Australia, but particularly here in Melbourne. It's, uh, it's been running on the news uh, all day. Have you got any reflections on Father Bob? Look, I didn't know Father Bob, uh, obviously a very nice guy, um, media priest and so on. Uh, I, I, I didn't know him or anything. I don't really have any, any independent sense of him. Um, uh, obviously lived out his, uh, his vocation to help the poor. Uh, so that seems to be a very salutary and uh, praiseworthy fellow. All right, we'll leave it there, Greg Sheridan. Thank you.